Well, hi there. Recently, we discussed the black mamba, and we determined that it is probably the scariest snake on the planet. But it isn't the only mamba on the planet. These are green mambas. Specifically, these are eastern green mambas. And they belong to my friend Chandler from Chandler's Wildlife, which is a channel that, if you're not already following, you totally should. Now, there are actually four species of mambas in the world. The black mamba, the eastern green mamba, the western green mamba, and the Jameson's mamba, which is also green. These four mamba species are the closest living relatives to the king cobras. Now, the black mamba, as we discussed earlier, is not actually black. The inside of its mouth is black. But the eastern green mamba is clearly an absolutely gloriously green snake with a pink mouth that I'd rather not see. In fact, of the three green mambas, the eastern green mamba is by far the brightest green of them all. I mean, look at these. They're amazing. Now, the mambas actually fall into two clades, and you'd probably assume that one would include the black mamba and the other would include the three green mambas, but that doesn't appear to be the case. In fact, this green mamba, the eastern green mamba, is more closely related to the black mamba than it is to either of the other two green mambas. The eastern green mamba is the closest living relative to the black mamba and vice versa. But despite being the closest living relative to the scariest snake on earth, the eastern green mamba has the mildest venom of any mamba, which is a bit like being called the least dangerous hand grenade. But between being the most beautiful and the least deadly, this has got to be the best pet mamba. But is it a good pet? And is the eastern green mamba the best pet snake for you? No, almost certainly not. But Let's give it a score anyway, and we'll do that based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the black mamba a score of zero out of five. This isn't because it is impossible to handle, but because it is really impossible to do so without a real risk of death. That is because black mambas are long, long enough to get back up a snake hook on you. They're fast, the fastest of any snakes in the world. They're grumpy and they're deadly. Eastern green mambas are a bit smaller, though generally well over six feet, averaging around two meters. They're slower, at least flat out over land, though they are insanely fast through the trees and they're very darty. So they're still scary fast, but they aren't as defensive as black mambas. And their venom is less deadly. And we'll talk about that in a moment. What I'm saying is that this is a better snake to handle than a black mamba. Sort of like a black bear is a better bear to wrestle than a grizzly. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't recommend that you pick a fight with any bear. And the eastern green mamba, despite being a better choice than a black mamba, still gets a zero out of five for handleability. But I'm gonna give Chandler a moment to tell us what it's really like to handle these snakes. Well, hi there. Green mambas, eastern green mambas. Out of all the mambas out there, I'm pretty sure green mambas are the easiest to handle from my experience. I haven't handled every species yet, but so far, the green mambas are pretty placid for a mamba. Now, I wouldn't say they're a good pet. I never say any venomous reptile is a good pet. These are educational animals for exhibit to teach people about these animals to get them to respect them more. And if we breed them here, we'll donate the babies to a venom lab for venom research and any pharmaceutical purposes. But the thing about green mamas, even though they're beautiful and you might want to have them on display in your living room or something like that, just like most of these beautiful venomous reptiles, a simple mistake, you could have it loose in your house and that's the last thing you want. Snakes are escape artists, especially skinny, squiggly little beans like this, little green beans that can get through any little cracks like nothing. You'd think your snake cage is nice and snake proof, but maybe you don't see like a little tiny hole in the back that's for like a cord, for like a little waterfall in your enclosure, and you forget about it. Next thing you know, your green mamba's missing. That's hell, because it's not just a snake that can crawl around on the floor, it's a boreal. It could be up in your vents. It could be, if you're in a townhouse, it could be in the neighbor's vents now. It could be anywhere. That's why if you keep venomous reptiles, you should always have snake-proof cage, snake-proof uh, room. You should have permits by the state you live in so everyone around you knows that you're legitimate and you're safe and you're being kept in check. Now, when it comes to handling green mambas, they're not too bad. Like I said, it's nothing like a black mamba. Mamba, big black mamba will just shoot up in your face, whereas a green mamba is pretty placid. Don't get me wrong, in a split second, they could bite you. And when they get upset, as you can see, they start squiggling 
And if they wanted to, they could shoot up and bite you right in the chest defensively. But remember, the last thing snakes want to do is waste their venom. They need their venom to take down their prey. So if they waste their venom on you, that's a missed opportunity to get food. So as you can see, he comes towards me, he investigates, but he's not flashing his mouth like a black mamba. He's investigating, he's looking around, they're checking out what's going on, they're barely even essing up. I don't handle these snakes too often, just when I clean. So it's not like I've habituated them, but you can notice these snakes are not gaping at me, they're not doing anything. They're just inquisitive, they're looking around, they wanna get up high and hide. So they are easier to handle than the black mamba, but they're definitely not a safe snake to handle in general. Now, let me see what I can do with these guys. Just wanna get this one that's leaving right now so he doesn't leave our set, we're not done. Whew, look at you guys. Obviously, I've been doing this my whole life. Don't mimic anything you see me do. And notice, woo, 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 big thing about mambas. Big thing about mambas is they go upwards. So since they're arboreal, they'll start shooting upwards on the hook. And that's why you're always supposed to keep the mamba's head higher than where the tail's being held. So they don't want to come back down that hook towards you. They're always going towards the higher area because they're arboreal. Look at that. But look, they're nice and calm. Whereas a black mama would be shooting all over the place. Don't get me wrong, these were captive bred snakes. Imagine if you had a wild caught green mamba, it'd be darting all over the place. You just saw how that one was acting. Got all squiggly and wiggly real quick. But as you can see, I can gently touch these snakes. Not too bad. Whereas a black mamba, I wouldn't be doing something like this. It just shows you they're much more of a placid species of mamba. But don't get me wrong, even if uh, a green mamba isn't as venomous as the black mamba, they can still hurt you pretty bad and possibly kill you. Thank you, Chandler, and thank you again for having us here and showing us all these incredible animals. We've filmed, obviously, a lot of awesome videos since we've been here, and Chandler's been so generous and kind to have us here. Definitely, if you haven't already, make sure that you're checking out Chandler's Wildlife. He's gonna show you these animals, his amazing camel that we got to meet for the first time, his crocodilians. His life genuinely is every bit as wild as it seems on TV. When it comes to care, we give the Eastern Green Mamba a score of two out of five. Now this isn't an insanely difficult snake to keep alive. It's an active arboreal snake, so it needs a lot of room to climb around. It needs consistent access to water, a good temperature gradient, high humidity, probably about twice weekly feedings. So it's a bit more intense than most snakes, but easier than many lizards. There are really only two real problems, keeping you safe while caring for it and keeping it contained. Snakes are escape artists, and there may not be a snake that is much more suited to escape than these. They are expert climbers. They are highly intelligent. They have skinny heads for a venomous snake. Now it is often nationwide news when somebody's boa escapes in a neighborhood. Now replace the word boa with mamba. Not to mention what happens if you don't know that it's out until you crawl into bed and find that you weren't the first one to sneak under the covers. You cannot let this snake escape, but it's very good at it. Now let's talk about that venom. I told you before that the venom is not as bad as that of a black mamba. And part of the reason for this likely has to do with their different diets. Black mambas are primarily mammal eaters. You are a mammal, and though you're not on the mamba menu, this still means that the black mamba venom recipe is well suited to ending you. Green mambas, on the other hand, specialize primarily on birds. And since you are not a bird, the cocktail is not as tailored to your physiology. So what will it do to you? Well. Right away, it will be different from a black mamba bite. You will likely experience pain and swelling at the bite site. This can even progress to necrosis with time. That's obviously a real problem, but probably not life-threatening in something your size. If you're gonna die, it will be due to the neurotoxins that are injected into you. That said, in many cases, the neurotoxins in green mamba venom may not be very noticeable. But if they are, you may experience some muscle twitching, paralysis, and your heart may stop, which is generally undesirable. If you are in Africa, there is a polyvalent antivenin that will reduce your chances of dying considerably as, as long as you get medical attention quickly. If you aren't in Africa, that might be considerably more difficult to find. So you might want to know where to go for antivenin before you decide to get a mamba. Just a thought. Or conversely, you might want to get a pretty green snake that won't kill you, like an emerald tree boa. But the reality is that to care for a green mamba, you will be in harm's way from time to time. And the best way to minimize this danger is to use a trap box, which is essentially a hide box that can be closed and locked. 
If you keep the trap box in a consistent and elevated position in the enclosure, then the snake will naturally go inside for refuge whenever you start acting like you're going to mess with them. Even snakes like mambas and king cobras don't want to pick a fight with a human, and will gladly flee to refuge if you provide that option. You will need to close and secure that box, so there is still some danger, but with proper tools that danger can be minimized. And then you can do maintenance like cleaning and filling the water bowl, etc. The main interaction that you will need to have without using the trap box will be feeding. This will be a prime opportunity for both bites and escapes, so use long tongs and a great deal of care. And this is why they get such a low score for care. Care is dangerous, even for the safest mamba. The safest mamba, that sounds funny coming out of your mouth. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Eastern Green Mamba a score of 4 out of 5, assuming that your Eastern Green Mamba is captive bred. The main things to watch out for are that you keep the temperature gradient correct and provide consistent access to clean water and high humidity. If you do that, your snake should live over 10 years, sometimes as long as 20. When it comes to availability, we give the Eastern Green Mamba a score of 1 out of 5, and 1 is Probably a good score for a mamba. I don't mind that mambas aren't in the checkout line at the grocery store. Well, I guess they are sometimes, but I've never seen an eastern green mamba for sale next to the Mentos. You're not going to see green mambas at pet shops or most expos. Again, if your local pet shop stocks mambas, please let me know where. This I have to see. You're going to find them online from time to time. Probably what you want to do is find a breeder and get on a wait list. It, it, you know, if this is really what you want to do. This is, of course, assuming that there is a legal path to ownership where you live. You will likely need to jump through some hoops, and uh, that might include moving to a different city, state, or even country. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Eastern Green Mamba a score of 3 out of 5. Really, nothing about keeping this snake will be exceedingly expensive, assuming that you don't need to move. And permitting may cost something, but the snake itself will not be exceedingly expensive. The enclosure, though, don't skimp on this enclosure. Toad Ranch has a lot of great options that would keep a green mamba contained. There are other brands as well that you could go with. You're going to need substrate, climbing branches, a locking hide, a water bowl. The only really unreasonable part will be the danger that you are assuming to yourself, your friends, family, community, and the reptile hobby as a whole. So take it seriously. And this is why overall we give the Eastern Green Mamba a score of 2.0 out of 5, which is the same score we gave to Black Mambas. But that is kind of an artifact of a 5 point scale. This is a less terrible, terrible choice, and probably the least terrible pet mamba that you can get. In the same way that the Sumatran Tiger is probably the least terrible pet tiger. But this is a really bad idea for almost everybody. But if you want an active, beautiful, arboreal green snake that is not great to hold, you should probably get a red-tailed green rat snake. It'll probably bite you, but your heart won't stop. Green tree pythons and emerald tree bows would be an even better idea if you didn't need it to be so busy. But if you have to have a mamba, well, this is probably the best one. And I think it's probably the prettiest too, but I still wouldn't recommend it. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. But, you know, you could even say in contrast to blacks, <laughs> What is, why did you get- Oh, I'm smelling the ramen noodles right now. I told you guys, Mamba Musk smells like ramen noodles. You're not just hungry. Sm <laughs> smell my finger, Clint, off camera. Yeah, smell my finger. Smell Come smell my finger real quick. The Mambas are good. Smell my finger. Tell me what it smells like. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. <laughs> I'm starved. I never want to eat them again. <laughs> so this is the reasonable man's this is Mamba. This is the most reasonable Mamba. This, there is no reasonable man's mamba. This is the most reasonable mamba.